Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've come back up to Kinloch Leaven because I wanted to have another go at shooting a Grey Mare's Tail Waterfall. Uh, I think it was last year in probably September time, 2022. And the problem that I had that day was the there was still a lot of foliage on the trees and that meant that the view to the waterfall was being obscured. And a few people had recommended that you know, why don't you come back in winter? Well, it's only taken me something like 18 months, but I'm back. It's March 2024, and the trees, thankfully, as you can probably see behind me, are still very much bare. So I'm going to try and see if I can improve on the images that I got in the last video. And stick around, because unlike the last video, once I'm finished with the waterfall, I'm going to take a walk up to a view area that I know, which has some pretty impressive views down Loch Leven towards Balahulish and uh, the Pap of Glencoe. So stick around to the end, or if you get fed up with the video, go to the end. Believe me, the view's worth seeing. Uh, anyway, let's get going. Well, the good news is there seems to be a lot of water going over because I can hear it already and I'm nowhere near it yet. Well, it certainly is a lot more clearly visible when there's no foliage cover. Right, I've pretty much set up the first composition. It's a vertical crop from just above where the water first enters the frame, down, I'm including this old tree here, all the way down to these lower cascades across. I'm including this piece of green here because that gives it a little bit of colour when in an otherwise very, very muted image. And then up to include just these lower branches of this tree. I found, I'm trying to do it in one single exposure because thankfully we don't have an awful lot of direct light. Although that said, this might be about to change because it looks as though we're going to get some light coming through. But we didn't have an awful lot of direct light and that meant it wasn't as contrasty as it might have been. And I found that about half a second, the highlights in the waterfall were starting to blow, but I was getting good detail and tonal contrast in the foreground so um, I dropped it to about 0.3 of a second and that's retaining the highlights in the waterfall and it is still allowing us to get just a little hint of the details in the darker area I'll probably reshoot that uh, about half a second so that I've got that file to blend yeah, look, we're getting some direct sunlight now, so that means it's become a lot more contrasty. Still not too bad for a, a first image. I'm going to go a little wider and try and include these trees. Obviously, that's going to involve me possibly burning out the sky as well. But I want to try and include these trees at the top to give it some scale, because that is quite a significant waterfall. And I think by adding the trees, it's one thing saying you've got the foreground trees here, but they're obviously a lot closer and you don't know how far away the waterfall is. But by adding those far away trees, the trees at the top, that gives it a little sense of scale, I think. Just going to have to be careful with the exposure. Anyway, direct light's dying away again just now, so I'm going to quickly grab this first shot.
Right. Same shot, really. Only, well, the camera's in exactly the same location. I'm using the same lens. All I've done is taken it from about 40 mils to its widest uh, range, which is 24 millimeters on this lens. And that's allowing me to include those trees at the top. But as I suspected, even though we don't have any direct light on it just now, those bright clouds behind the trees are burning out. So I've had to take a couple of different exposures. The, even at about f, uh, sorry, about one fifteenth of a second, the highlights behind those trees are still burning out. But at that kind of shutter speed, everything else is pretty much in darkness. So I think I'm going to have to take two or three different exposures and do an exposure blend on this. Right, I've taken that shot. Let me just talk you through what I've done. I've focused here on the bare rock so that I know that the waterfall itself is sharp. And I've shot that at 1 20th of a second. I've then moved down and I've focused on the base of the falls in these rocks and shot that at about 1 10th of a second. I've then focused on the far wall there on this uh, little piece of greenery and shot that at one at half of a second. I've then focused on this closer green uh, bush and that's taken an exposure of one third of a second. And I'm going to blend all those together. Okay, right, I've taken this, pretty much that composition. Same as before, I've had to do a couple of different focus points and a couple of different exposure points. We're starting to lose the light again, but it was very bright a second ago. So I started with focus on the rock, shorter exposure time, focus on the green, short, uh, longer exposure time, focus on these close-up um, cascades, longest, of the, uh, the exposure time. Same aperture, same ISO throughout, not moving the camera in any way, just adjusting the shutter speed. Okay, come down a bit lower. I'm right at that gangplank now. That's the composition in the back of the camera. As you can see, I'm, I'm kind of shooting vertically still. Got the waterfall coming in at the top right of the frame. The cascades leading their way down. This walkway either forms a very major distraction or a very useful leading line. And right now, I honestly can't decide which one it is. But I do know that that log that's running directly across about just below halfway across the image is very distracting so I'm going to have to either get higher and lose that or that's going to be one major clone removal job when I get back. Right, I've got up onto the gangway and that's allowed me to get above that fallen trunk which was causing me some issues but now that I'm here <laughs> I've just realised it's essentially the same shot as the one I was taking from that little ledge there. I'm about five or six feet closer but the composition's essentially exactly the same. So I'm not really sure 
there being off on the gangway actually makes any difference. I might go down onto the rocks now and see if I can find a composition down there. I remember, it's, it's kind of coming back to me now, I remember previously I was trying to shoot this cascade over there in the hope that I could use that as a foreground for the main waterfall. But I seem to remember that once you get over there, you actually lose the main waterfall because of the the curvature on this, this rock face. So I don't think that's actually going to be an option. So I'm just going to look around now, see if I can find another shot. Right. What I've done is I've come to the end of that first uh, gangway, the first plank that took you out over the wolf falls. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for this. Anyway, that's given me a slightly better angle now that I can include these cascades and the main falls. It also reduces the impact of this uh, trunk and all in it's a slightly better composition. There it is on the back of the camera, that's the composition that I'm looking for here. So, as you can see, vertical waterfall pretty much coming down centre, slightly right of centre. You can make out the cascade as it swings round and the cascade is broken up slightly by that fallen log, but it's, it's a lot smaller in the frame. So yeah, essentially here, here, all the way up to there. I'm including, as before, some of these greens and these overhanging branches. But thankfully, because the branches don't have any foliage, it's not really obscuring the, the waterfall by much. I think what I'll do now is, while I'm here, I'll zoom in a little bit and try and take a detailed shot, maybe, with this tree as foreground and the waterfall directly behind it. And we'll see if we can get an image or two of that. I survived my trip out on the, the gangplank. Right, let's see if there's any images to be had with these lower cascades. Yeah, as I thought, I've not even got near those cascades yet, but it's pretty obvious that we're going to lose the waterfall. You can only just see the very topmost part of it now. But that said, I do actually like those cascades in themselves. There's quite a lot of interesting colours and textures in both the water and in the rocks that the water's pouring over. So I might go down anyway, see if I can set up a couple of shots there and that'll be the main subject. We also have this little cascade here, which again, some interesting textures in the water and kind of like the colour change between that kind of yellowy ochre kind of rock underneath the surface and the more reddy orange ones next to it so again might be might be another shot there so i'll start with this one and then we'll move down to this closer one
Right, I've shot both those cascades. Um, they may have worked, they may, <laughs> they may not have. I just had one of those really annoying things. You ever had this? I was right down there try to take pictures of that lower cascade when my camera decided that the battery needed changed. And I'm actually on a two day trip at the moment and I completely forgot to bring my battery charger. So I only have three batteries with me. And I put the second fully charged battery into the camera and it said that it couldn't communicate with the battery. And I ran a risk of damaging the camera if it's not an appropriate battery or something like that. So that battery is now no longer usable. So I'm literally down to my last fully charged battery. So I'm going to be conserving uh, the battery power on the main camera from now on, because I have another couple of stops that I want to try and make before I head home. And in the middle of all that, we had some lovely light just here. And I think I missed it. So I'm just waiting now to see if it comes back. It's possible because you can see the light here just starting to pick out some of the details here, but it was actually catching these lower. Oh, here we go. Yeah, just like that. So that's it for Grey Mare's Tale. Let me know if I managed to improve on the previous shots. I'll leave a link somewhere. Right, I couldn't leave the area without climbing up to a little hill. Uh, it's actually the hill that the, the waterfalls pours off of. So what were those trees were that I was shooting? Uh, and the reason is that, although it's a pretty steep climb, the view from the top down Loch Leven towards uh, Balhulish and uh, the Pap of Glencoe and all that is just fantastic. Get a load of this behind me. There's a lovely shot of this in my upcoming book, hint, hint. But it was taken in, uh, I think it was September or October. So all these trees are a, an amazing orange and yellow colour, apart from the, the pines, obviously. But the view down the loch is just breathtaking. This section is part of the West Highland Way. Then just the other side of this ridge here, is uh, the start of the Devil's Staircase, which crosses over from the base of uh, Buchaletive Moor, just at Alton Fay, up over the Devil's Staircase across the moorland and drops down into Kindlechleven here. I actually hope to be doing the West Highland Way uh, maybe a month or so from now, six weeks, something like that. So if I do, then I'll be flogging the entire journey and making some more photographs. I'm going to quickly grab a shot here, probably handheld, and then I'll make my way back down to Kinlochleven, into the car, and then all the way around into Glencoe Village and back through Glencoe to my next stop. So that's it for another video. If you liked it, then give us a little thumbs up. 
and uh, feel free to hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, bye.